Hi! Welcome back to Arcade Spirits. Last time, when working our new job on the day of the interview, uh, we met Gavin and Naomi. Gavin being a very curt but friendly enough chap who is trying to keep the fun clicks from going under, and Naomi who loves these games and is a really sweet girl. But also seems to think that Gavin is a money-grabbing fiend who's going to gut the place if he could have his way. And there's some friction there, but we'll just keep things calm. And we had the lunch that Naomi very kindly gave us, so let's head back to the employee room and enjoy it. The room where I had my bizarre job interview with it will suffice for food times. It's not much, a few folding chairs and a kitchenette, but it'll do. Utterly famished by this point, I have a seek and unpacked my loaned lunch. Okay. Coherent screaming. Coherent screaming. Awake death. <laughs> feel like if I suddenly saw a mascot come to life, I'd be like, oh, yeah. I feel like it'd be incoherent. <laughs> With my mind and body screaming wildly, my paralysed form is unable to move from the vision of terror before me. The half-person, half-animal waves their appendages in front of me, likely closing in for the kill. Hello? Anyone in there? See? Nothing to be afraid of. Uh, right. I see. Looks like you've stabilised. I was worried I scared the life right out of you. Hey, so I'm sorry if I traumatised you. Really? Can we start over, maybe? I nod my head slowly, though that could just be muscle spasms from being in shock. <laughs> oh my god, this Louise is a drama queen. I'm Ashley. And I'm Louise. I'm also Pinky the Funplex Flamingo. It's my secret, yet not-so-secret identity. <laughs> the Funplex Flamingo. This is almost too much to take in. Gavin was a bit... a bit of a lot. Naomi was off the scale, cheerful. Well, I've met some really intense people so far. Uh, did you sneak into the employee section just to get my autograph? <laughs> no, no. Oh, I thought you would recognize Pinky from all the signs around the arcade. A pinky is the mascot of the Funplex, after all. Uh, n no, no. Um, uh, actually, I work here. You work here? Since when? Today? This morning, to be specific. Oh, awesome! Welcome to the Funplex! <laughs> hmm. I mean, it would have been way cooler if you were just so enamored with the chippy flamingo creature flashing on every wall that you had to know more. Let's see. You could have stealthily maneuvered your way through all the games, sliding right on up to the employee's only door. But how did you get the door code? Ooh. Of course. You would have collected the password on a piece of paper that fell from Gavin's pocket. You searched your heart and decided that four-digit number had to be the intel you needed. Let's see. Next, you needed to lie and wait for the opportune moment to punch in that secret key code. Just to find me. It just keeps going and going. Ashley's got quite the imagination, all right. Well, I mean, wow. I'm suitably impressed, albeit slightly terrified. She can just take an idea and run with it. Where she's running with it, I'm not sure even she knows. And how would you have snuck out, I wonder? I could have helped. But for a price. Ashley finally realises she's been babbling to herself for a good couple of minutes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sometimes I get swept up in a good story. I mean, I gotta find some way to make this job more interesting. Is it really that dull here? No, not really. I just crave a different kind of excitement than beeps and boops, screaming children and broken machines. I'm not really painting the best picture here. <laughs> Oh jeez, I don't mean to be a downer, I just want to move up in the world. I've got things to accomplish, dreams to fulfill, cosplay to make! Cosplay? As we switch topics, it's like she's a different person. Ashley's eyes light up as she smiles. 
Yeah, you know, like dressing up as your favorite video game or TV character. I love it. It's so empowering to be able to make your own costume and wear it proudly. It's even better when people recognize what character you are. Empowering, really. Granted, she certainly has the power to stop my heart for a few, few beats. Yeah. Definitely. You want to try? Got a favorite game character? I can help you make your first cosplay if you want. In fact, I made this one. I think Ashley is going to use her flamingo costume, but it's a little hard to tell with her hands as feathers. So, Pinky is your creation. Intentionally. Yep, it looks pretty good for my first mascot cosplay, doesn't it? Ooh. That's not self-deprecate. Let's go for... I don't know heads and tails, but I can appreciate it. What I know about costuming, you could print on the back of a matchbook, but clearly you know your stuff. It's interesting how everybody at this arcade has one thing they're super passionate about. <laughs> Thanks. It's nice when hard work is appreciated. I wear it around the fun place to liven up the crowds, get people pumped to play some games. And the kids seem to adore it. That makes sense. Though the arcade has been completely dead so far, no crowds to pump or kids to be adored by. Hey, secret between you and me? She motions for me to come closer. She leans in, glances around the room once, and then talks in a hushed tone. I did some repairs on Pinky overnight. I had to restitch her left arm, and I was giving her another test drive to make sure it doesn't fall off. Limbs crawling off does seem bad. Oh, it was. Yesterday it was down to a little girl. It must have been like five, six years max. Anyway, we were next to Skittle Time stage and she tugged on my arm and... Whoosh! Off came the arm. The girl instantly started falling. Well, at least you're consistently scaring people and it's not just me. Nope. Hey now. I don't want that to happen again. I felt so bad. Enough about me. What about you? So you're Carl's replacement? Guess so. I'm the new floor attendant. I attend to the floor. The floor is a thing I am attending to when I'm not going into cardiac arrest. At least you're funnier than Carl, that's for sure. Oh, Can't wait to go home and tell Juniper I do have a sense of humor. She'll be so proud. I assume you've already met Francine, but have you had a chance to meet Gavin and Naomi yet? Yeah, I met them already. That seems like they're not too keen on each other. Right? Ashley rolls her eyes and lets out a sigh. <sighs> I wish they would hurry up and make out already. Yeah. W wait. Seriously? So, are they going? Well, Louise, if they haven't made out yet, surely it's a pining kind of thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> They always bicker like an old married couple. It's a classic anime cliche. The ones who fight always end up together. Mark my words, Louise. Consider them not. Beep beep. Beep beep, Louise. What's that sound? Trap. I set an alarm for when my lunch break was over. Time to go back to the grindstone. I didn't get a chance to eat. What? No. That's no good. Louise needs her calories. You eat up. I'll go wash the floor. In fact, how about I take over the ticket desk for the next shift? You can do my job and run the floor a bit. Fair enough, thanks. Ashley winks before her face disappears into the dark recesses of that inhuman mask. All this closure, I think that's kind of cute, that mascot. I know it's a little scary, but I still think it's cute. Though I can understand if you weren't expecting it and suddenly there's this looming shadow, it might be scary. As I'm wolfing down rice in the shape of a little heart, it occurs to me I didn't actually ponder my first impressions of Ashley yet. Besides, you know, terror. Let's see. She's pretty amazing. I like her enthusiasm about her art. The way Ashley's whole expression changed when she talked about things she's passionate about just warms my heart. Her beaming energy just lights up the whole room. I wonder if one day I'll be that excited about something. Anyway, with lunch in my belly and break time complete, the second half of my workday began. Rolling into the afternoon, the crowd starts to fill out. School's done and late rising pros are heading out to their arcades of choice. With Ashley covering desks, my job is to wander the floor looking for problems, or potential problems, or just making sure everything's a-okay. 
but for starters, it's a good moment to collect my thoughts. I think I'm off to a decent start with my co-workers, good first impressions at any rate. Cooperation is going to be a must, I've had awful co-workers before and they can really drag down your day. Hang on, no time for daydreaming. I think I spot, let's see, three possible issues to look into. I should have time to get to all of them, but which do I tackle first? An irate customer near Mr. Mooty's magic maze, someone cursing up a storm, a fist of discomfort, a loud crowd around Showtime stage. Now the loud crowd, that could be a fun thing. Someone cursing up a storm could have just lost a game, but the uh, irate customer, the use of the word irate makes me think this might be a problem. My mutant floor attendant senses detect danger from the left hand side of the arcade. I quickly rush all of 30 feet to the scene of the crime, already in progress. Come on! Oh! Hurry the fuck up and finish your game! You, do you work here? I saw you behind the desk earlier. Look to self ask, getting for a name tag or something. Yes, I'm Louise, I'm one of the floor attendants. Well, stop attending to the carpets and attend to me! I want this bugger to wrap up his damn game so I can play! Ashley's face is obscured beneath her costume mask, but I can feel her wince. Man curses up a blue streak. Sir, there are children present. Please keep the swearing to a minimum. If you keep this fat piece of shit off this game and I'll sing Mary Had a Little Lamb all you want! Figuring I ought to hear the fat piece of shit side of the story before rushing to a judgement, I tap the pain on the shoulder. And he doesn't even notice my tapping. Is he like stunned or something? So I tap again. Twice. Mm. I probably shouldn't assume like he could. I did see this one video. I'll, I'll find it a link in the description about um, how uh, people who have had uh, sort of like uh, traumatic injuries to the head um, can sometimes seem like they're under the influence of something. So you shouldn't really assume. Uh, sir, there are other players wanting to give uh, Mr. Mooky's magic maze a spin. Curiously, the player looks up at the game's marquee, which simply reads, Loopy! You know the game's full name? Sure, I've played it a lot when I was a kid. It's actually called Mr. Mooky's magic maze, right? Wizards and pellets and monsters and stuff. Yeah. A bit terse as he's laser focused on the game, and I can see why. He's currently sitting on 714,900 points. Holy crap, that's a heck of a high score. Well, this is not a direct problem, is it? Holy fuck! That's a shitting high score! Excuse me! Right, no. Uh, so, could you please wrap up your game? Hmm, nope. I'm keeping good pace here, plenty of live stock, on par for getting close to the world record before the kill screen. Somehow, the thick arcade jargon sounds classier when draped in his British accent. Huh. Like I'm watching some documentary program on the BBC. Ah, the sounds of home. Yes, but this is a public arcade, other folks want to play the games too. He finished clearing the current board while pondering his predicament. Okay. At first I think he's stepping away to end his game, but he's letting his stock of 50 extra dudes slowly deplete as he pulls out his wallet. Without pause, he pulls out $3,000 in cash and holds it out. Will this cover it? For a moment I flash back to that movie where some dude pays another dude to sleep with his wife and they roll around in it. Louise, why did that come to mind? I mean, I know it's a lot of money, but... Sorry, that just boggled my asexual brain for a moment. Uh, cover what exactly? The cost of the game. The game itself. 
apparently I can't do a low voice and stick in my accent. <laughs> I had never seen this much raw cash in one place at any given time. It's not even in 20s. Dude's rolling in Benjamins. Um, one moment please. On it. Fortunately, Iris already has my messenger app open for me, with Gavin's contact info preloaded. Thank you, Iris. With trembling fingers, I key in. Customer wants to buy Moopy for 3k. What do? In less than a minute, I have my response. Considering we paid $200 for it, plus parts, yes, absolutely yes. Sell that relic immediately. Well, okay then. Although... How's the Naomi gonna react to this? Offloading one of her darlings just because Gavin wants to make a 15 fold profit? It also feels kind of weird to be taking advantage of this guy's lack of a grasp on the real cost of old arcade machines. I knew all this workplace drama was gonna catch up to me at some point. But with this rando breathing down my neck, I'd probably make a decision. Ooh. Oh, what do I do? Oh, but Gavin's in charge. Oh, goodness, what do I do? The game was 200, but I don't know if we should sell. It, it's an older game and it only costs us about $200, but... And, um, it's, it's part of the arcade, sir. I expect this apparent gazillionaire to protest and not get in his way. But he's smiling. Alright, this is Mr. Mooty's home after all. Let's compromise. I'll pay you $1,000 American and own the game, but you keep it here. And in return, I get to play as long as I want, provided nobody's already playing. That way, I can keep chasing the score, but your arcade stays whole. I'd hate to break up a loving family. Naomi will be relieved to hear that. Even if Gavin and Nate we should pass out two grand. Good, I'd hate to make Naomi cry. How can I do this myself? Which leaves the rando hopping mad. To be fair, we had been kind of ignoring that he exists. What the fuck, man? What kind of an arcade is this anyway? Fuck this, I'm going to Dallas Palace. And we just lost a customer. Well, he was unpleasant anyway, fuck off. Stomping his way out the door with stomp, stomp, stomp. On the plus side, Naomi ran dry. On the negative side, I just threw the random out into the cold. What a disagreeable fellow. As for the player, well, he goes right back to playing. Eating pellets, sapping ghost monsters, clearing mazes. With the crisis behind us, I can actually focus on who this gonzo rich guy actually is. He seems to care about more than just his game. Take it from someone wallowing around in the low tax brackets. The rich can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And yet, that's not what this guy did. He could have, but he let us keep the game. He just wanted to play, that's all. And why? Because of Naomi. Because of the funplex. It's a home and a family for the games. And apparently for us. Maybe it's for the best I sent that rando out the door in favour of this guy. So, you know Naomi? He's happy to talk even while playing. Must of be course. a flow state. I'm a funplex regular. My name's Percy. I'd hazard you're our new floor attendant. I was here when Francine seated you behind the desk earlier. That's me, Louis CM Arcade Wrangler. Well then, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, and I look forward to getting to know you better. So, you've seriously just been playing Moopy all day, huh? What can I say? It's my calling. It's my calling. <laughs> I actually owned a movie cabinet once. Had it in my flat. But playing it by myself, all alone in the dark, it's not the same. I need the atmosphere. He sounds more Australian to me. The beeps and the boops. No, those you eventually learn to filter out. <laughs> I mean, everything. The games, the lights, the kids, the feeling of being in an arcade. I score my best when I'm in real-world conditions. Aww. Oh, I get they're probably going for like an old london kind of accent, but... Uh, Adam Hill actually did a, um, thing about how the Australian accent is like a slowed-down cockney. <laughs> it's all about the emotions. The laughter and the tears. 
the excitement of competition. I need that swirling chaos of human emotions around me to play at my finest. Mm hmm. Naomi gets that. She keeps Moopy in top condition for the day I eventually land my high school. What's the current world record then? About three and a half million. This guy has been standing here since I was working on the morning shift. Hours and hours. And he's still only about oh, 720k into this game. Can't imagine him being in anything but top health condition to try this. Guy's gotta have legs made out of carbon fibre and a bladder of tungsten. Hmm. I just let a few extra lives drain out whenever I need to go pee. Also, he may be psychic. I feel like I should let him get back to his game, but burning questions, they burn like fire. How is it he can afford this game? You must have a sort of job good income. So we're gonna get you <laughs> ditching gold. Let's go for that top one, it's the most polite, I think. If you don't mind me commenting on it, that's a lot of money to just have on your person. What do you do for a living? Hmm. This and that. He doesn't really seem to care to talk about his work. Not in a guarded way, it's just less interesting than his current maze. Maybe he's actually the head of an international diamond smuggling ring. They hide the stones inside arcade games, all that empty space! <laughs> and day trading. Huh? Day trading. Stocks and bonds. Anybody can do it if they have a head for the numbers, it's really nothing important. Or, maybe he's a day trader. Don't think so. <laughs> I don't think people are defined by their work. I know the arcade is home to those who've made their passion into their work, but it's the passion that matters more. What a nice insightful thing to say. Are my passions the same as anyone? I look forward to learning yours as well. Ah. That almost sounds like an innuendo, but I'm assuming it's just friendliness. When I'm not deep in the middle of a game, I mean. She's getting more and more distracted by the game. I should leave him be. I have to go do a thing about the thing. Mm -hmm. Be seeing with me, CM. Yet another weird encounter in a stream of weird encounters. By the end, he sounded more like the high school junkies you hear about in documentaries. Obsessed, driven, kind of strange. Well, that's not the impression I had of him from the beginning. He smiled when talking about not splitting up the arcade. There's something more going on here. Well, he's a funplex regular. There'll be plenty of time to learn more about him later. I've got work to do. Let's see what to handle next. And we'll do that in the next episode. Thank you very much for tuning into this one. I'm really liking this. Although the uh, angry random guy did set off my ex-retail worker alarms. <laughs> um, Hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you'd like to see more of this i am having a great time playing this game and i hope you have a lovely day hope to see you next time